Well, I assume the microphone's working. Go. Cool. <laughs> well, yep. Yeah, if we're both ready. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Cool. You on the stage? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well. Um. Hi, everyone. I'm Will. And I'm Amy. And uh, we make the we make up the Silver Events developer team. So what we do is we make the mods that are behind the Speed Silver events. Uh, these are these multi-day long uh, modded multiplayer events. We get dozens of players on, and uh, they get recorded, and then these things end up becoming videos with sometimes tens of millions of views. And we've been doing this for a while now, and we want to share some things that we've learned while doing this. Okay, so probably the most important thing with anything to do with making mods in general is just using Git, <laughs> because the ability to just have your full version control and to be able to share your code between the whole team is just invaluable. If you don't use Git, it's basically impossible <laughs> to get an actual mod completed. As you know, anytime you make an issue, you can... Yeah, anytime you cause a problem with your code, you can just revert back to the version that was working. Of course, when you have like multiple people on a team, one or two, however many, it also allows you to, you know, sync up your code between everyone without <laughs> causing obscene amounts of problems, which is pretty common <laughs> whenever you first start trying to do boot projects. Like if you're in college or anything, you'll probably know you're not using Git and you're uploading to OneDrive or something. Probably not a good thing. <laughs> Any kind of version control is probably good, but Git is probably the most accessible and easy to use. You can also make things a bit easier if you're working in a team by using commit messages, which are actually valuable. You could just spam your commit messages with random letters and garbage, but that doesn't really tell you anything. And barely browse through them. So giving proper messages, we use something called conventional commits to just Kind of give a brief idea of what the message is <laughs> but there's other options available it's, it's all up to the individual team and users and just as it's important to make use of git it's also really important to make use of all other tools that you have available so we use github for our git repository hosting and so we also use GitHub Actions for CI and GitHub Issues for tracking tasks. Um, so GitHub Issues are really powerful, or just any uh, issue tracker. Um, at the start of a project, what we do is we go through the development document that we've been given, and we distill the requirements down into individual issues for each feature. We then break that issue up into atomic bits and then write them down as checkboxes in the issue description. And then we label and assign them to each other so we all know what we're doing and when each bit needs to get done. Of course, issues are also really useful for tracking bugs. So when we get to the testing phase of a project, which is, of course, one of the lengthiest and most important phases, uh, we usually receive a spreadsheet where each row is a different bug. Uh, and then we transfer those over to GitHub issues and track them individually. Now, I used to do that manually, but it took ages. And this brings me to my next point, automate things. I created this thing called issue sheet. Now, what issue sheet does is it transfers bugs from a CSV file into GitHub. Um, so I highly recommend doing this, writing tools that make your life easier and just remove the more tedious bits from your workflow. Uh, we've also got some in-game automation things for development. So we've got commands which uh, dump items or Lucasite regions to JSON. 
uh, which we can then use in configs. And we've also got some uh, visualization things which allow us to iterate more quickly. Uh, one thing I will say is just be careful not to get uh, caught in the automation trap, which is when you spend more time automating than you would have spent just doing the thing you're trying to do manually. I have been caught by this a couple times. Okay, so one thing when you're doing multiple events in a row, going over time, you will just end up building up your own like library of content you've created. And one thing that I find very useful is to just keep this old content when it, whenever it's not an issue, whenever it's you know not a problem to port or to cause issues with other features, so just leave them in, <laughs> carry them along. Because honestly, when you're creating <laughs> this kind of content, you never know when it might come in handy. You know, you could be in the middle of a session for a video and you could decide, hey, that item from like two videos ago, that would be really, you know, it would fit the theme right now. It would be really nice. Somebody could use it. So when possible, it's always nice to just keep them around until they become too much of a problem to hold on to. However, one thing is making malleable content. You see, when you're making an item for your game, or a feature, or any kind of mechanic, it's always important to try and keep it and design it in a way where it can be used more in future. Sometimes when you design an item, it can be very specific. It can only be used one time because it's just so tied to the situation at hand. Such as when you're making, when I made for a video, I think two videos ago, based on the published ones, we had to make these pedestals, which would allow you to craft an item by having all of the requisite ingredients. And when I did this for the first video, I just, you know, made four different pedestal items, gave them each the model, and then just made it so if you right click craft that specific item, they just came pre baked with an array of item stacks, and then you just had to match that in order to craft. It also uses the same pedestal model from peculiar pieces. <laughs> However, this was essentially useless because if after that video was done, it was just you could never use that again. Like you're never going to want to make that same item with that same material. So after that video, I remade the entire system with a nice fancy UI. It has a lot of settings here, such as announcing in chat, having a little lightning effect, having it be single use, and having the price go up every time it's used. And once you place it down, you shift right click, you can put in any items in that UI, and the entire recipe will just be completed. It takes like five seconds to create a custom recipe with a pedestal at any time. And we've been using that for the past four videos now. It's incredibly flexible, malleable. So when you are designing features, stuff like this is probably the ideal. Because then if ever you need something even similar to being able to, any item you need to make obtainable, it takes two seconds to just slap one down, break it if you want to, place another one, change the recipe with shift click, it just takes no effort at all. And it it's opens the door for a lot of funny content. You can make your completely normal items for the event video that were planned. But, you know, it's also possible to make funny joke items. You could place down a recipe for a trident if it's relevant. Do you need an item to be added for the sake of the progression of the video? Or just to help a team? You can just place one down and change it. Very easy takes like no effort at all. However, when you are carrying a lot of content around with you, there's going to be a lot of like messy leftover code. Things are going to get out of hand. You have to know when to just scrap things. As you go on in time, you're going to constantly, over time, you always discover new dependencies you can rely on, such as these over here. Some examples being player abilities, lib, kernel components, and stack. API for, you know, allowing players to fly, for example. Cardinal components for everything. If anyone here hasn't used it, you should look into it because it is incredibly valuable. And stack, which allows for any stack size over 64 and avoid you having to do a hellish amount of coding. So the biggest thing is when you do learn all these new mechanics, eventually you just have to decide. Get rid of all the old, 
code that is just completely garbage. <laughs> Rewrite any other things that you really need. For example, if I need, if we're updating and I'm getting rid of a lot of old code, I'll probably be rewriting the pedestals. I don't think I'll be passing them, even if the code is atrocious. I haven't looked at it in a while. <laughs> make use of these new skills and dependencies you find, because honestly, if you keep dragging forever, you will get completely tired and sick of what you're doing. It is, it gets really painful. One good opportunity to do this is to wait until you hit a major update, like 1.20, in future 1.3.2 or so on and then just use that as a reason to toss out all the old code that's probably all half broken anyway and make a nice new selection of clean using the new dependencies of code <laughs> now in my part of the events i tend to be creating a new mod each time because i work on the more server side section uh, so my approach to reusing code is a bit different. Old content isn't generally directly accessible, but the code of it is often still there and still built upon. Uh, for example, we had a lifesteal system in one event, so players would drop a heart on death, and that could be picked up by other players to increase their max health. And this worked so well that we wanted to use it in the next event with a couple of alterations. But of course, to do this, I had to untangle the lifesteal code from the previous events code. Um, and then after that, we wanted to use it in another event after that one. And so at that point, I decided to just move the lifesteal stuff into its own mod. And uh, this is the mod icon for that mod. Because, I mean, that's the mod icon for most of my mods. And now, when working on events, uh, I tend to write every feature as its own self-contained module. Uh, so that would look something like this. There we go, little UML diagram. Um, and uh, I write it as I write everything as its own self-contained module, so that the entire thing can just be copied out into the next event, or even into a separate mod, if necessary, with just a simple control c control v Now, quite often when doing this, we need to make some kind of minor tweaks to some values, or turn a part of a module on or off uh, for balance, or, you know, maybe it just doesn't fit the video. Um, and it's nice to not have to change the code at all for this. So I tend to add lots of game rules. Uh, that moves us on to what I consider to be the ultimate form of code reuse. Not modifying the code at all, but still changing the behavior. Behavior through, behavior through configuration. So throughout every event, there are these different phases. Uh, some phases would just be simple SMP style survival. Whereas the next phase might be an active event like a plague or an orc invasion. Since the phases differ like quite a bit between the different events, but every event has this phase structure, I created a JSON defined phase system. And with this, all it takes is for me to change a JSON file and then run a reload command, and I can change pretty much anything in the event structure. So what gives each phase its behavior is a list of things called, well, phase behaviors, because I'm on original. Um, there are a load of standard ones that I've made, which do things like running commands, scattering players, or changing a load of game rules at once, or changing the world border in a specific uh, world. It's also super easy for us to make new behaviors for each event just by implementing a couple of methods and writing a codec to create the behavior from JSON. But quite often we don't have to do that because by composing our phases like this from behaviors, and by the way, I'm a huge fan of composition over inheritance in general, uh, you should look into using more compositional patterns in your code. You can. I know that Java tends to try and push us into a more kind of 
we'll extend this and extend that and now you've got 500 different classes um but making compositional uh patterns can really simplify your code and it can make it so much nicer um but yeah like and it's paid off for phases we hardly ever have to write new code we just build up the behaviors that we need from the more basic behaviors that we've already created so when you're running a player based event this our events usually have around 100 or so people the basically main thing you need to focus on is keeping players happy and enjoying it however you can't really do this without a set of rules the issue is you can design rules you can have a whole rule set for players to follow but it can be kind of almost too restrictive at times players can you know if you have strict rules about using certain items in certain places and whatever else these can get in the way of what could be cool moments or just fun gameplay mechanics so i think the main takeaway for this is to just treat the rules more as a set of guidelines they are good for like following them when they make sense because many events many people just kind of take the rules they follow it like a bible and then it just kind of gets in the way of things i see this all the time and just in general i see it in the way many discord servers are run i see it in the way minecraft events are run it just can get in pro it can cause problems but it could easily just be sidestepped by having everyone know the times when rules can be ignored and then let them by you know <laughs> obviously there's some rules that you would never let slip stuff to do with hate or other harassment -y type things but those you can just leave this very solid this idea is more for like anything relating to game mechanics where a lot of things are very situational <laughs> you gotta remember that this is game design nothing is really set in stone sometimes the more fun sometimes the less fun things are the ways to go and everything is case by case especially when you're trying to make fun content you have to be able to understand case by case situations otherwise everyone will just feel kind of restricted in an unfun way and the best content comes when players are able to have real fun <laughs> you can only fake so much that's one thing i will say and finally i'd like to say that i think the most important thing that we've both learned is that we all stand on the shoulders of giants we wouldn't be able to do anything that we've done without building on so much of the awesome open source software that's out there. Huge thanks especially to Gegi, Patbox and the rest of the Nucleoid team. Your software is phenomenal. Um, and we do of course give back whenever we can. We've made pull requests to Nucleoids, player roles and more codecs, uh, Fabrics Fabric Installer, uh, Quilt Standard Libraries and other projects based on code that we've needed for events. So, once again, thank you. Okay, well, now if you have any questions, just a reminder for anyone who's not sure, you just take a written book from the front. If you want it to be anonymous, you just drop it in once it's written. If you want your name to be attached, just sign the book and it will show up. And also, can somebody show me how to actually access the questions? <laughs> Have a look. I'm going to assume it's this one. <laughs> oh, eat it when there's goo. <laughs> um. How does the questions thing work? Are any coming in? Seems to be an old one from the previous. 
guess I'll just go. Grab a two. Okay. Grab a two. Nice. <laughs> okay, here we go. Are you able to maintain a good server performance on a server with hundreds of players? Well, <laughs> that's a bit of a challenge. Usually, the servers do experience a good bit of lag. We we do remove certain vanilla features. For example, a lot of the time, random tick speed is turned down or off at times, just because it can. It is a major TPS drain. Villager AI for, as well. <laughs> oh. Jesus, villager AI is yeah. one of the <laughs> worst things, especially when players start making villager farms and stuff. Any mob of brains just kind of bogs down the server. So stuff like that we end up, we tend to disable either with game rules or just entirely. With yeah, obviously with random tick speed we turn it off for a while. We still have other ways, like some events have had people with the ability to grow crops with an ability. So you haven't you didn't need the random ticks to grow crops. So usually there is some game mechanics which are kind of taken away or like reduced in order to help with performance. We might try to look into other things in future which might be handy. Or just to be Yeah, we we, we, we tend to run a lot of Spark profilers. Um yeah. Every every event we're taking loads of bent um of profiling. Uh, okay. Yeah, and of, of course we use a lot of um I suppose off the shelf optimization mods. Um, C2ME is a big help. I know it's technically um, unstable, but we've had few problems with it. It's worked yeah. fine in the majority of cases, and that is really That's helpful when you've got a lot of people spread around the world. Also, um, a new one. Um, of course, uh, oh. Krypton, Lithium. Uh, yeah, like Starlight as well. Sodium, it's very good. Uh, Starlight. Like, so, yeah. basically all the known optimization mods. So, um, why not start off making separate mods instead of oh, modules? Hang on, my audio is broken. More for you. <laughs> oh. Well, that's more of a question for Will, because I, I am going to start using modules more so, because it, it does seem like it would be a better design. For example, in the main mod that has all of those different weapons and stuff. The issue with having them just, you know, the normal layer blocks, items, whatever, is that over time when you keep adding to the same mod, the mod just grows and grows. And then your items folder is huge, your blocks folder is huge, your entities folder is huge. So even just as an organizational thing, it will be nice to, I'm probably going to start doing each video has its own folder and then its own initializer and everything, just because the growth from a mod like that just gets very out of hand pretty quickly. Is your audio working? Do you say something? <laughs> I didn't... Did anyone else... I didn't hear anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one day, Linux will have audio that works. <laughs> this is not that day. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to answer this one as well? Um, yeah, sure. So I would really like to create everything as a separate mod. The issue is, A, where do you draw the line? Because as it is, we do run lots of separate mods per event. We have generally a content mod, a server content mod, our base content mod and our base server content mod that is shared between all events. Um, a couple things like the lifesteal mod and uh, also another separate shared content mod. Yeah, there's there, there is a there is a reason for all of this separation. <laughs> we make <laughs> Yeah. There's a lot of different aspects and that's all just the mods we make, not including stuff like create, which is in half the events and other yeah. random mods like um well, I'm not sure that um <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So the the, the the difficulty is A drawing the line in what goes in what mod and B 
it's it's Gradle and IntelliJ because <laughs> it will take ages to index every new project and switching between every projects time you open it just adds each one. Yes. Yeah, everything is is a bit of a pain when you've got too many projects. So yeah. for that reason, we All have right. to keep it to a minimum. So, how much moderation staff do the events require? So, we, as the developers, we are able to show up and be staff, but we're not required to. But from what I've seen, it's usually there's one or two, like mod, like event staff you know, who have operator status and all that, who are online at any given moment, like, scheduled, and the rest of them just kind of come and go when they're not scheduled. But I'd say, like, during the whole thing, usually two to three very active staff members kind of go around, teleport to random players, keep an eye on things, try to encourage cool interactions and all that. And usually it runs over. I, I don't think we usually have many, like, troublemakers or anything. People no, usually no, just not usually. join and play the game. <laughs> Rarely is it that staff have to get involved. And like, yeah, people don't. I was going to try and think of a situation, but no, people really don't tend to cause many problems for the most part. No. <laughs> I think, think, you know, the worst we've had, I think, is a few people using X-Ray and stuff. And some people being yeah. just bad sports. And, and there was that guy who kept on trying to join our uh, server whenever we were testing anything. But I mean, we have yeah. whitelist on, so good luck. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, not too much event. It, I think it big thing is, though, it will depend on the event host. You know, like, depends on what your community is like. <laughs> Some event. And also, another thing. <laughs> sure. But um, <laughs> one thing that a lot of... The, a lot, that helps this is a lot with moderation is the fact that, for the most part, people have to, like submit an application to join the event and that's usually how they get in either they've been in a previous event and they were decent or they stand out during one of the more open test events like being invited by another person who's led in or they're like submitting a video application so it's a lot higher about you and if you have no whitelist it usually gets a lot more you would probably need more staff just to keep an eye on things because people can't just join with an alt yeah. and start causing trouble no, I, I can't imagine how how awful it would be if we didn't if we didn't whitelist it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So next, are the mods for events all closed source? Well, for the most part, the content mods and most of the libraries are. We for the server side mods, it's kind of like an extra level because there's code that's only on the server that the client needs to function, which is in a separate mod. So you can't even get access to that, even if you are in the event. But there is also aspects which are more open source. Like, we do develop into, like, for me at least, I have one of my own libraries which I maintain, I'm going to overhaul soon, which I use for the coding of these events. And I do make changes to that based on what is needed for events sometimes. So that aspect will be open so for the most part, it's closed source, just because People people are weird about it. There's been people uploading remakes of the content to Curse Ward and all that. It's like Yeah. No. It's... They literally like rip the assets from the jar files of the event and use our assets on worse code. <laughs> it's it's very cringe. Let's see. It is. It is. But yeah, we, we, we do obviously as I've said, we give back as much as we can. Um and in a few yeah. events, uh we modify uh, already open source mods, and for a lot of those mods, uh, we keep the source available. Uh, with yeah, it's Silvercoms on GitHub. Yeah, it, uh, it's, it's when it's it? other mods we do do pull requests. I think that counts as another bit of open source. But, um, yeah, do you have an example of when the rules didn't prioritize fun content? The rules didn't prioritize fun content. Um. Hmm. See, that's the issue. <laughs> Coming up with a situation on the spot is very really hard. But I do know that has been it a situation is. too. Because, like, yeah. Because I, mean, I mean, there there have been moments where it's been like, oh, you know, 
if this person were to stumble upon this, that would be good. There are some um, things, like, for example, um, stuff like, in general, rules like friendly fire, obviously. They're usually friendly fire is enabled, but it's like, don't go murdering your own team. But then there's been times when people have just decided, hey, here's a duel that's going to happen, you know? I think I think that's happened like, yeah, three that's, times. that's a good it? example. <laughs> yeah. And, like, you know, friendly fire is on for a reason. May, eh, kind of spices things up, but also, and prevents projectile spam. But situations like that are usually what we mean when we say encouraging it, because that is a rule. Don't go killing your teammates, but it's broken fairly a few times just when it makes sense. When somebody randomly wants to kill people, no. But when people want to do it in like a lore plot way, which kind of encourages the plot of the event, then it, that's usually one time it'll go through. Let me see. Woo, yeah, I mean, well, that's what I'm talking about. Woo, Talon. <laughs> Thank <laughs> Thanks, you, Alan. Thank you, Talon. <laughs> Woo. Woo, <laughs> Talon. <laughs> I was running the famous Windsweep Cowboy event. It was good, so uh, <laughs> it was very silly. <laughs> Let's see. What was your favorite videos to work on? So I think... I'll go first. Well, be, care that. be careful because some of them haven't been released yet. I know that my oh, no. favorite Mine is has not been released. One, so it's been... <laughs> All right. I think. I don't know if I can show the slides again. Oh, I think I can. One second. If I go back to the video, is it one of them? Let's see. It is. So this one in the middle, on the middle bottom, the Zombie Island one, I think that was by far my favorite one because oh yeah that was good it had a, basically a key component in making that really fun was the fact that there was like a respawn mechanic in the game so like you know there was like a fancy drip stone it dripped into a cauldron it gave you an antidote you could throw a zombie and a teammate would be revived as that zombie and i feel like that probably had was one of the most interesting videos ever all of them because the fact that you can bring players back, if you use a name tag on a zombie, it'll always bring back the player whose name that is, if they're on your team. Oh no, I think it's on any team, as long as they're dead. So I think that one was by far my favorite, just because of that. Because it was just so cool seeing how players use that mechanic. People would steal the dripstone and all sorts of shenanigans, I guess. And people respawning their friend, running away with dripstone, getting a bit of antidote, getting their friend and running away. Like, stuff like that was just incredibly engaging to me. Uh, that is exactly what I want to happen when I designed and uh, helped design the system and coded it all. <laughs> Do you have one of the existing, the like public ones that you'd say? No, I, I'd forgotten all about that um, that revival system in the zombie island thing. I think either that or I did like making the catapults in the medieval civilization one. <laughs> Yeah, uh, those we had these I... catapults that people could drag around and then lob rocks at people. We um, made very cool visuals of just loads of rocks soaring through the air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then the more recent ones, um, these uh, Purge and Battle Royale ones, we moved towards, instead of scattering the players around at the start, everyone was concentrated at the start. I quite enjoyed uh, working on that because in every test we just got to see all of these players just sprinting towards the center to try and get all, all of the loot. That's like my uh, or some of them thing. running away for their lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good Tom. Tom was very funny in that one. Using the main video, but yes, check out Talon's version of it. <laughs> From their perspective. Also, an honorable mention to the Purge one, where I just think the weapons, the custom weapons for that video were really good. And I feel like the fact that there was multiple, you had like a whole team that was like, each one of them had the sickles, which I think was a really cool visual. Yes, you did a great job on those weapons. Amy does all <laughs> of the you. custom weapon work, and it's just it's so cool. Okay, now I think I... 
it's gone black. Oh, there we go. How do you manage testing of your products? Do you do it by yourself or do you have a set of members in your team who go in with fresh gear? So we, I don't think we currently have a set tester. I don't think I, we used to though. Where yeah. one of the one of the people we knew who played in some of the events would go through the mod, play test it as much as they could and write it the spreadsheet for us. I don't know how it's working at the moment, but I know another member of the team does go through the mod looks for bugs and still does it there's there's plenty of testing and also oh yeah thanks to talent for the reminder there's um there's test we do a, a test run of each event or two or three sometimes before the actual main event just to get like a feel for the mods a general play test usually we just respawn players we don't have like a hundred four hundred players which itself usually leads to more problems we miss but we usually get enough players we respawn them keep it going these events yeah go to i like, think we tend to have like, like five days 30 to 40 we reduce it to one testers, don't we yeah so it's like it's like a very short version of it which kind of misses a lot of problems but better than doing nothing with multiple players like play testing with real players is probably one of the most important things to do in terms of any kind of testing okay um How did you get into creating mods for this event? Well, for me, Will needed another person to help test and uh, to help code it and came to me and asked me if I wanted to, and I said yes. Uh, you probably have a more interesting answer. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like, was it years it ago? Was quite long ago. Years? I think it was probably uh, MMD requests channel. True. That's usually yeah. well. That's why I, think, I started yeah. with doing. Mods, and at, at the time, there like was a lot of mods. activity in there. I I don't know. I I don't know what that's yeah. like these days. I haven't been in there in a while. Neither do I. Yeah, like I. That's why I started with doing paid requests. I just went in there, looked at anything that seemed interesting, and just did it for like usually a pittance. <laughs> I did one mod for like six dollars, and it became one of my most downloaded mods. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and now this is a big step up from that. Yeah. It was... Uh, yeah, I think this is definitely one of the best... Oh, the best modding uh, modding job we've got so far. Yeah, I think so. Admittedly, I missed a bit of this talk, so this might have already been discussed, but how do you handle brainstorming ideas, multiple events, and deciding if you work now? So, we don't usually start with the we like we are after the basic ideas for it have been decided. It's like an I think it's like Speed Silver himself and a few other members of the team do the basic decision making and ideas for these events. But then once they write a design document and it gets to us, we usually we're able to go through the design document and give our feedback from like whatever like as a coding perspective and a game design perspective on things that need changing and there's often been many things that have been changed. Like, I don't think... Like, yeah, it's it's a good system, I think, because we do... There's many things that we end up saying, this seems weird, this seems very weird, and then we tweak it a bit, make it more it, balanced, fun, entertaining, what have you. It's it's usually her. I, I don't have a very good eye for that kind of thing. Yeah, I read over like whole thing like three times just because I enjoy that kind of thing. <laughs> Let's see. Do you think Firebank code might be used to look at for performance in your event? Maybe. I haven't really been paying full attention. I know it's what's making us able to walk at somewhat decent speed in this event, like the Blankicon. So I'll probably, if that's like a open source thing, might be worth looking into. It would be very nice if we could get more. Oh, nice. It would be nice to get yeah, more totally. performance in the other events without having to reduce things like random pick speed. I think Village AI is staying gone, though. That's awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. What big hosting server should I... Well, I don't know where our server box comes from. Yeah, we've just got a VPS somewhere. Yeah, we just kind of got handed one. We just managed details the servers on there. <laughs> Yeah. Although that VHS, said, capital hosting is what's running BlanketCon. Yes. But capital hosting sponsored BlanketCon. So I assume that you can get a 
Maybe they have a code. You must have a pretty big server to run this, but like, yeah. I guess there's also, you know, you could use Will's Nodecraft code or you can yes. use my Bloom code on our mod pages. <laughs> That's so you you've got plenty of choice. You've got plenty of choices. I'd probably recommend one of those three. I would. I'm not going to say which ones I wouldn't recommend because I'd probably be rude to a very big public event. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at the hosts that we haven't mentioned, and uh, <laughs> don't use them. Yeah, exactly. Choose from one of those three. Oh, oh the game is lagging, I think. Uh oh. Ooh, there we go. Oh. Can you recommend any tools to maintain code in larger projects? I'm one year into modding and I don't use anything like linters. Yeah, I feel like my code quality you need some improvement. Um Can I can I say this off? Because yeah, I, I, I do just want to say, check style is useful in theory. We don't use it for the simple reason that it really slows you down. Um, I've considered adding it, but I've spent so long just fixing things that only check style cares about on um, Fabric API and Quilt Standard Libraries pull requests. Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't want to bring that into our projects. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, I mean, we, we use, we have a .editor config file, so our settings are standardized. Um, yeah. And so we don't have, like, inconsistent indentation or anything like that. And beyond that, you don't really need that much i don't think if you're careful yeah. and if everyone has a if everyone involved has a consistent view on what good style looks like and everyone involved cares then it's yeah I, fine i think the biggest thing is for, practice. <laughs> like big open source software projects there's a completely different answer uh for a lot yeah. of them <laughs> check style is probably a good idea but yeah, for us, it's yeah. just two of us writing code, and we both know what nice code looks like. So I will say though, code just kind of uh, it's easier to get away with decays. no linters or anything like that. Yeah, I don't think it decays. It's more that you're you're going to constantly improve as you practice, and no matter what you do, your old code is going to look horrific in like a few days, a few months, a few weeks. It <laughs> you just got to keep going through, tossing out the old stuff, getting new stuff repeatedly. Yeah, it has happened to me over days. <laughs> I Like, Amorite is a mod on this server, and I wrote a big chunk of code right before I fully learned what cardinal components are, and then immediately it looked ter terrible, and I wanted to go back. And then I did. The version on the server now is the rewrite using cardinal components. It's got fancier particle effects, as you can see. <laughs> and, like, yeah, sometimes it can literally look like garbage over a day. <laughs> See. What's one thing that you made that worked out better or completely differently from what you expected during a player event? Hmm. Yeah. I think, honestly, a lot of the events we've done, I, I think at this point I'm very surprised how well the first event went. <laughs> Because that was like, we hadn't really done a massive player event before. And that one went, I think, really, That's I think true. it's one of the better ones. And like, I think it, most of the events go better. I think, I don't think of like one or two events that went worse than was expected. I think the rest of them have done better. Like, yeah, I think, yeah, I think most, it's a bit of a boring answer, but. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, Talon. <laughs> okay. Most Ooh, of the silver people. videos I've seen seem to have a narrative behind them. Example, the anti-cure scientists. How does this desire to have poor narrative factor into development? Do you just let players come up with a narrative on their own without pushing them one way or another? Okay, very, so very good question. However, that you is are. a really good question. So none of them are explicitly like scripted. 
like say for the there's like the two eras of the multiplayer events i guess it's like the new battle royale ones and the previous civilization ones. in the civilization ones there was like a set structure of the phases that you go through if you see any of the videos you'll it'll be pretty obvious on the sidebar at all times those phases are completely obviously scripted we had to code them on after all but say for example the anti-cure stuff that completely came out of nowhere that was completely natural like they came up with that on their own <laughs> and i think we probably we or the staff or whatever did probably help a little bit to like keep it going to let it happen like i think for example when he revives the when they're running away with the dripstone and he revives his teammate one of us gave him the name tag to be able to do that because <laughs> otherwise they just couldn't respond that specific player and it would have been lame so like once a plot line makes itself a you know, exists, then we can try and encourage it, help it out to keep going instead of just ending kind of anticlimactically. But for the most part, they kind of just happen on their own. Like sometimes it doesn't even need our help. Like there was like a, was it during the, I think it was during the Jurassic one, there was like a whole underground fight club that was just made. They had like a duel for who was like the leader of the group. And then they were invaded, and like, all this other stuff just kind of happens, and we didn't even know half of what was happening until it did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, Town said basically exactly the case. Letting things happen naturally basically always makes for a better story video. It's like I said during the Breaking the Rules slide, is that player enjoyment is what matters the most. Players who are enjoying themselves will make better plot lines, better stories, have a better time. And like, if you try and constantly constrict, say, oh no, you can't do that, blah, blah, blah. It kind of just, yeah, it makes it feel super rigid. And then players just don't enjoy themselves. They get less enthusiastic. They stop trying new things. It, 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 the whole thing kind of crashes if you're too restrictive and rigid. So letting things happen naturally is the best way. Do you have any comment on it? No, no, I think you, you hit all the points there. Totally agree. <laughs> All right. Um, what code editor ID are we using? IntelliJ. <laughs> IntelliJ. I use the Minecraft development plugin. I don't know if you do. I do. Yeah, it's it's really yeah. useful. I think that's especially for mixins. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. Like, use the Minecraft development plugin. <laughs> that's by far the most important one, use IntelliJ, use the Minecraft development plugin, use stuff like Quiltflower, or I guess it's called Vineflower now, look into Vineflower now, yeah. I'm not, not going to give a tutorial, but you know, look into Vineflower, it makes things a bit like, a little bit easier. Let's see. Um, how did you get started making mods for content creators? So, I, I'll go first, but like, I went into the MMD channel like we mentioned before the um minecraft mod development server request channel a few smaller youtubers would go there i've done like a few little mods for those and they've been made into videos or shorts or both and gone along i do i did work for um cj these days at one point uh like mr beast's brother and that was because i was recommended to him by vasky so like being a part of the community and active and people knowing you it helps a lot. Like once people know who you are, you could get recommended. Like if it wasn't for me doing things actively in the MMD channel, then I wouldn't have gotten this position. <laughs> like being an active member of the community, I think is the best way to find content creators who would like your work because even if they don't come to you, they might come to somebody who knows you, who might then recommend you. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, it was also just making little mods from requests um, in the MMT request channel. One thing I will say is that I massively undervalued myself at first. I think everyone does this. Don't do this. Yeah, definitely. Don't don't make things for like fifteen dollars or whatever. Six dollars now. <laughs> yeah, your time is worth more than that. Yeah. All right. Um, people like your mod content so much. Why don't you release it? Legal issues? Well, 
that yeah well i guess you could say legal issues because it's the decision of the speed silver and his team if it's released we don't decide that but um i think honestly like obviously we can't do it legally but even then none of these mods are like able to work like if i gave you the mod that had some midas sword and all those other weapons you that you wouldn't even be able to craft them because they were all craftable pedestals which are you know an admin has to place down <laughs> none of these mods are designed for playing with except for in an event i think most event mods are like this where like you can have an event that's based on yeah not balance of typical playthrough you can have events that are based on public mods but if you have custom mods typically those custom mods are just only good for the event they're not good in any other situation they might have weird mixins they might have all sorts of things that just you don't want to play with and we we just don't want to maintain them like we don't want to have to maintain the sword that gains sharpness when you kill people we're done with it it's over it's in the pile if we're paid to do it again sure but like we're not going back to that because why would we it's like there's so many better mods out there that are actually fun to play with. So go do those. <laughs> if you press the green, it'll throw that question. The like smiley face next to a question. I, I can't. I can't work this. I'm an old person. <laughs> I can't work okay, out I'll, this I'll, You just leave that, and I'll work. You can look at it if you want to see the upcoming questions. But I'll I'll press the buttons on it. Legation and. Do you sometimes wish to participate in those events as players without knowing the narrative and be spoiler free? Or are you fine always doing the hard work in the background? Remind us to stay hydrated. Okay, after I answer this, I'll <laughs> have a drink. But um, I think for some events, definitely. But from a blind perspective, I guess. I mean, for these events, it's hard to say because having the perspective is what makes me enjoy watching people play them. You know, the things I made. But I guess if it was other people's events, yeah. I did, I did enjoy playing events if they were the similar degree of these ones, especially if it was like the Civilization ones, because I enjoyed those ones gameplay mechanic-wise. So yeah, I guess I, I guess the answer is yes, but I'm not like crazy enthusiastic for it or anything. I think it's more just like, yeah, it'd be fun. <laughs> you know, if I was given the opportunity, I would. I played on something recently, but like, I'm not... Insane. I kind of enjoy just watching people using things I made, <laughs> which is kind of the reason I'm here. Because <laughs> like a bunch of the mods I worked on or made are here, and it's really nice when I get to see people in the crowd and just wandering around using items from my mods. <laughs> like I see one person over there with double jump boots, so you know, shares to you. <laughs> you want to answer as well? Um. Well, my, my answer is a bit more boring, which is um, no, not really. Not <laughs> because of the events, just because I don't really don't play much Minecraft, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be good in the events just because I wouldn't make very good content. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. Let's see. Um, what do you think is the most important factor to making an event slash mod fun to play? Honestly, just kind of good game design. <laughs> like, I feel like the best events are the ones, like I said, that have really interesting game design, like the zombie event. I think when you have an interesting mechanic or something to tie everything together, that really boosts the funness of an event. Because, like, I'll be real, vanilla Minecraft. It can be fun, but for an event, you kind of need something more. You need a mod that kind of changes your perspective, a mod that makes things mix it up. It's like you can have a theme in a few players, but it will usually go well. But I think when you add a, a mod with something to aim for, to strive for, to change the main gameplay, it changes a lot. Even in the new events, those are very vanilla-focused. But those four items in the middle of the map, they kind of do change it you know this the end goal isn't beating the dragon getting an elytra or whatever the end goal like people can have elytra and they can just lose because somebody else just shot them with the fancy bow you know i feel like those kind of items and stuff can change it and, and all the mod stuff can change it 
きませんあんなあ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、
Um, we get a 500 block tall pair. Be what you want to make the change in the world. You know, be the change you want to make in the world. That's the quote. <laughs> you should go and make it. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Can you repeat the one thing? The one thing. All right, let's, <laughs> let's go back to the start. <laughs> We're doing oh the God, whole presentation. The thing. As someone who has never really done anything pertaining to commissioners in general, how would you go about putting a reasonable price on the market commission? I think that kind of is just something you gain a value for. I'm not really... Yeah, just like, don't let yourself work below minimum wage, basically. If you're putting however many hours in, don't charge that's less like a than... minimum? Yeah. I would also say that if you're like... I guess this is kind of <laughs> a bit of a of self thing to say but like i wouldn't personally go lower than whatever i'm able to get <laughs> like that's it that's a really good wedding let's say if i'm being paid if i am able to be paid 25 by somebody i'm not going to ever accept 20 because that's why fair, would yeah. i when i can go to the other one with 25 and like just keep putting your price up because as you go on you're getting more skilled you're making things quicker there are less bugs whatever else higher scope higher fancy effects like you get better over time, so don't go down. <laughs> That's my main thing. Don't drop yourself, drop your value, because there is no value you're dropping. You're getting better. Your price should only go up. <laughs> Let's see. My personal question, my younger brother really likes the content creator who basically does content exactly like this, sucks for one. Have you worked with them or know anyone who did? Would be a fun call. Um. I know I have. Um, about maybe about a year and a half ago, uh, I did. I think it was just craftable trying. hacks or something I... like that. Oh yeah, I remember you mentioning that. I think I. I don't think I did. I think I worked with some similar. One. Actually, no. I think I did one. I don't remember what it was. Let's see. Um, let me just look on the channel real quick. Okay, I think I might have done one of their videos. I, I, I won't check right now, but I think, I think... You see, I don't know if it's just the same video done by multiple creators or whatever, but I do remember doing a one where you can eat a lot of different things in the game. So if any, then that would be the one, but I'm not sure. I, I It might have been somebody else, so I... Um, that doesn't seem to me... I think there was a question there a second ago. Is there a question? Is it gone? Did we break it? <laughs> um, I think I think I'll put on the questions for a second. Anyone, just because we didn't give a bit of a warning, so if anyone has oh, any sure. that they already did, then just drop it sure. now, and then we're immediately putting it back off. So um, <laughs> last last chance. <laughs> put something funny in there. Yeah, that too. This level. If anyone has a last sec last chance, don't do too many, but like no more after this. Okay, uh, what? Uh, yeah, yeah sure. you can do one. I'll just read it there from chat. Curious how you are handling mod pack distribution to players. Well, I'll just give a bit of context to the past. For in the past, we literally just gave it a zip file that had all the jars and configs. But now, I don't know if we're able to talk about that, are we? <laughs> um, we're, we're working on something. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're working on uh, on the installer. Yeah. So it'll it'll be a lot. Fan it's going to be a proprietary thing, so like it won't be public or anything, but I don't think so anyway. But yeah. it'll be a fancy way of installing, essentially just similar to what the this mod pack had when you we were developing booths, where it just automatically updates mods, so... We don't have to send everyone a new mod zip or send everyone a single thing. I don't think it's a replacement. I think doesn't it use that one sub? Um, so we have two variants currently. Oh, okay. Um, one uses one strategy. One uses a different strategy. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna say. 
yeah, we won't say anymore. Okay, um, is anyone else looking to submit a question, or should I put it off now? Last chance. <laughs> Speak now, forever hold your peace. See somebody writing one? <laughs> I'll wait for you and nobody else because I don't see anyone. And we can take another one in the meantime. Um, go make me a good 500 block tall tater? No. Something you, funny, Sam. Talon MC. Ha 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 ha. Very funny, Talon. Thank you, thank you Talon. I, lo I love that one. Oh. Opinion on Chibi Tater. I don't know what that is. I'm guessing it's just a small tater. <laughs> it's not an AMI, so I don't know what it is. Okay, um. Bazinga. Bazinga. Did Madeline Celeste Bazinga. teach you how to double jump? Well, the answer is no. Madeline Celeste taught Moya Shine how to double jump, and then he made enchantment. So, um, here we are. <laughs> also, Madeline Celeste can't double jump. She dashes. Oh, yeah, it's a dash. Yeah, never mind. And then Moya Shine made enchantment, so we can dash now. Let me see. I don't see anyone else writing questions, so I am now going to close it for good. No more after this. I object this wedding. Wedding. Okay. Any announcements on future events? Uh, I don't Not know. From us. Follow, follow Silver on Twitter, maybe? I don't know where he <laughs> relays this information, but um, not from us. <laughs> Bites you. Okay. Nom. Wah wah. Wah 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 wah. Wawa, like like Toki Pona. <laughs> Best pony. Well, you answer that. One. <laughs> um, rarity. Based on your experience, who would win it between IMS and Tool in a fight to the death on stage? I feel like the only way to find out is to make that happen. So um, this is a call -in for both of you, for each other. True. The true winner is us, because we get to see it. So true. Uh, okay, I think that's that should be it. People are still throwing questions and other things onto it. Do, do we open it for like um, one second? <laughs> I mean, we have now gone ten minutes over. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing but another fifty minutes. But I mean, <laughs> I guess you can put it on. No, we put you up. Oh. Okay, closed again. Two. Did we get anything? Yeah, we got rabbit two. That was opening as we are closing <laughs> as we opened. Sure, we got favorite anime series or manga. Do you have any? Um, no, sorry. Mm. Um, I, I've watched. I, I quite enjoyed JoJo's <laughs> when I when I watched that. Oh, true. But that was a quite a while ago. I'll, I'll say the same. <laughs> I haven't seen much else. <laughs> gay, gay, homosexual, gay. True. What are some of the hardest projects you can share? Um. I'm not sure. Like, I think in general, nothing is like that difficult. I think the the main thing that decides how hard a project is is usually just like how burnt out I am at it. <laughs> like, other than that, usually most things are completely manageable given enough time and mental yeah. health. <laughs> True. Like, 
I don't think any of them are specifically hard. Maybe I'll I'll leave it vague and say probably the one I'm doing at the moment because it is taking place while I'm on holiday and during BlankyCon and other things. <laughs> so, you know, I am at a busy time. And that's probably the only reason that's hard. So I think that is all. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone, once again. I'll go flip the fireworks lever. The lever was a button. There we go. <laughs> Yippee! Ooh. The oh, light fireworks. One FPS. <laughs> Same, surprisingly. Is it? I think the server's. <laughs> the server died. What the it? hell, bro? Oh, Somebody else put one that just says chip. <laughs> Thank you, Ram and Jack. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. I'm out of here. That was awesome. Let's go. And the quests were longer than the actual event. <laughs> Get out the stage. Yeah, I think that's been every event so far, so far. I have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> where is everyone? <laughs>